All right, so it is the regular council meeting of Monday, April 12th, 2021. Uh, this webinar is, or this Zoom webinar is being recorded. First item is adoption of the minutes, governance and operations committee meeting of March 22nd, 2021, the regular council meeting of March 22nd, 2021. The recommendation is that the minutes of the governance and operations committee meeting and the regular council meeting both held March 22nd, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Do I have someone to make that motion? Councillor Gattafoni Robinson and Councillor Butler. Do you see any errors or omissions in the minutes as presented? No. Seeing none. Okay, go for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Against, if any? Carried. Public question period. We did not have anyone send in any questions for council to consider, so we'll move past public question period. And the third item is a proclamation request. The recommendation before us is that council proclaim the month of June 2021 as Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Awareness Month in the City of Trail. Is someone able to make that proclamation? Mm -hmm. Councillor Cushoni and Councillor Butler. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments on this? No. Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Against, if any? Period, thank you. Okay, now we're moving on to bylaws. So the first bylaw, number 4.1, is the financial plan bylaw, number 920. Oh, sorry, number 2902-2021 for second and third readings and adoption. So Ms. McIsaac, I'm going to turn the floor over to you for this. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so at tonight's meeting, we will be dealing with three financial bylaws, um, two as part of the bylaw category, and then we have a late addition to today's agenda for our tax rate bylaw. They were circulated to you this morning. So we will deal with the tax rate bylaw um, at the end of the agenda. Speaking though to the financial plan bylaw number 2902, which is before you tonight for consideration. Um, as you are aware, council has considered the operating budget earlier in the year, um, did give approval of the operating plan uh, and direction through to staff to come forward with uh, a budget with a tax increase of about 4%. Uh, the priority capital projects were also considered back uh, in early 2021. Council has approved the priority projects so that staff could get underway with some of those that were um, considered to be very time sensitive. Uh, and so those are uh, underway now. Uh, also, we have put forward to you the, the entirety of the capital plan. Um, and with that, this financial plan bylaw has been prepared in accordance with council's direction, um, particularly with respect to the tax increase. It is coming forward for first, second and third reading at today's meeting. And then because we're also under operating under the authority of the emergency program order M192 with respect to COVID. There are certain bylaws that can be given three readings and also adopted at one meeting of council. And so it is being recommended that you not only give three readings to this bylaw, but also adopt it at today's meeting. Um, the chief administrative officer has provided some summary reporting for your review and consideration. Um, most particular, uh, as we look at the 2021 budget as compared to 2020, uh, we are seeing an increase because council back in 2020, as a result of the COVID impacts, had direct, directed that there be a 0% tax increase when comparing the 2019 to the 2020 budget. Um, now that things have stabilized and we do appreciate that there are still some ongoing COVID concerns, um, but it was felt important to continue to um, provide the very important services and some increase in funding for this year's capital uh, projects. And with that, the financial plan bylaw is um, put together for your review and comparison. Um, we are seeing a modest increase as compared to 2020, and that is um, particularly because the budgeted surplus transfer um, in this year's 
uh, capital plan or in our financial plan is uh, raised back to our historic levels uh, as compared to the 2020 budget. Um, and so unless council has any particular questions, uh, the bylaw is being advanced for three readings. And then we would ask that you give adoption, but do that separately. Okay, um, San Councillor Santori, you have a question. Michelle, have you as staff heard any word from the province if whether or not they're going to be extending the date for payment of taxes again this year? Uh, so that I think the the date that you may be referencing was the late penalty deadline that was extended by the province. Municipalities have the option as to whether or not to set a, an alternative uh, date for payment and the direction that has been given by council um, through to staff to this point is that we will continue with the July 2nd payment. Um, but in last year's um, orders that were issued, the province had extended the late payment penalty right. um, into August. And so we will watch for that. Um, to my knowledge, we haven't received notification of any change yet. Okay, thank you. I would move, uh, what are we looking at? First, second, and third reading? Yes, first, second, and third readings. That's correct. I'll, I'll move. Okay, do I have someone to second that? Well, I'll second Councilor, it. Councillor Butler, okay. And any other questions on this matter? Councillor Doby, and your volume is off. Oh, your volume is still off. You're on mute. Mute. Am I okay now? You're good no. now. <laughs> All right. You're this muted. There's one error <laughs> that I noticed on the 16th page, and I, I never stopped and recalculated. So it says that the bylaw includes taxation in the amount of 15681, but the real true figure is 15861, is it not? <laughs> On which, uh, so, so when I'm working in, oh, there it is, yeah, transposed. Um, so Councilor, just, a tra just a transposing of figures, I'm assuming. And on what page is that and under what category? 6.0 financial considerations. There's the little chart there and it's on page 16. It looks to me like the 15861 is correct and it was just a transposing of figures. Mm -hmm. Okay, so noted. So that's in the staff summary report, um, yeah. but the financial plan um, that is the budget and its attachment is uh, properly notated. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, so we have first, second, and third readings. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions on this? Nope. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Oh, Aye. go ahead. Hang Sorry, on. Hang on. Sorry, I didn't get my hand up fast enough, but it's okay. Um, I'm just wondering uh, if there is any extra COVID um, funding, you know, this year, or do we have any from last year that's not showing up here yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, is that going to make a difference? Or are we just going to go with the flat, um, what, 4% here or 3.76%? And if that happens, then we'll just transfer it into some other category. I'm not sure. I'm just wondering about that. Go ahead, Ms. McIsaac. So I can't speak on behalf of the Chief Financial Officer with respect to committed funding from um, the COVID relief. But the direction that council provided for the preparation of the city's financial plan was to come back with a 4% or about a 4% um, budgetary increase. So that's, that is what you're seeing before you tonight. Okay, thank but, you. Colleen, I asked that same question before David. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it'll go into general revenue and then it will just show up as an operating surplus. It will show up as a surplus at the end of the year. So then you okay. 
carry that surplus over or use it for whatever. There is still a considerable reserve from the COVID funding, as far as I understand. Yeah, that shows up as a surplus on our right. surplus. And it's used for shortfalls in certain operational areas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So everyone, any other questions? Okay, question all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Jenny? Carried. Um, now we need to make a motion for adoption of financial plan 2902-2021. Move approval, Robert. Councillor Cashoni, and do I have someone to second that adoption? Councillor Doby, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, if any? Very, thank you. Okay, now the next item is 4.2. This is the 2021 Reserve Funds Expenditure Bylaw 2904-2021, first, second, and third readings. And Ms. McIsaac, can I turn that over to you? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so what this budget does is allows for the transfer of funds from our reserve fund for the purchase of capital equipment. So in the, the capital plan, one of the funding sources for particular items that are being um, purchased, particularly our, as part of our mobile fleet, um, are funded through the Equipment Reserve Fund. And so this bylaw, um, once given three readings and adopted, does allow for that transfer of funds internally. Um, this particular bylaw, though, does not fall under the special authorities where we can not only give three readings, but also adopt at one meeting. So uh, it is being recommended that Council give three readings for bylaw number 2904 at today's meeting. And when we meet next, um, we will bring the bylaw back to you for adoption. Very good. Do I have someone to make the motion? Councillor Santori, do I have someone to second? Councillor Eleanor Gattafoni Robinson, thank you. Does anyone have any questions on this matter? Seeing no hands up, move for vote. All in favor? Aye. Against, if any? Carried. Thank you. Okay, so now we're into council committee reports, and Councillor Doby, you are up first. Thank you, Mayor Pazin. I don't have much to report other than the fact that we did have a CIB meeting on April 1st. It was a Zoom meeting. And since it was our first, there were quite a few items that have been brought to our attention, but I'm just gonna, I tried to uh, prioritize them and just stick to what I thought would be most significant for you to hear. Um, the first and most exciting news is we have our new truck that's from the city of Trail and from their old fleet. And I can't tell you how much that's appreciated. Everybody's pretty excited about that. As some, may, some people may have read in the paper, our CIB member, Dr. Sue Babanese, is spearheading a mural project that is being planned at the back entrance of the hospital. This mural will go just above or about in the same area where they built planters last year. And um, I think this is going to be 100% funded by the medical staff at the hospital and supportive staff. Um, if I'm wrong in any of that, Mayor Payson, and you've heard otherwise, perhaps you could correct me. Uh, last year's spending on our budget totaled $80,000. It was actually $88,000, but we received $8,000 uh, back on our GST rebate, which brought us back down to $80,000. We are again aiming for that amount this year, the $88,000, but the actual budgeted amount will be $110,000. And I think we're gonna have a little bit more difficulty in meeting the 88,000 this year, as we have some expenditures that we've been putting off and we have to replace things as fertilizer, some of our tools, et cetera. The Echo Society has requested that we concert, consider planting more native and pollinator species. And we've brought this up at previous meetings and I think I've announced this at council in the past. We cannot emphasize enough how important uh, that type of planting is in our area for community living that's located in the old Presbyterian Church has also notified us that they're considering having a mural done on their property. I really hope that goes through because if we um, if we do send any changes to the Grotage Avenue area, 
that's going to be a real asset. We've been contacted by a Nelson teacher regarding a walking tour of our murals for her elementary students. But due to COVID and the changes that have come down from Bonnie Henry again, that's going to be put off. Some of the rock walls in the city need attention, power washing, crack filling. Chris McIsaac has a rock wall repair in his budget, and I think that money will pretty well cover, excuse me, cover everything that needs to be done. We've had great concern over the needles in the gardens and planters. This is a real growing problem. We now know of one downtown business who will not be planted their boxes in front of this, their business this year because of needles. And they've also found pills buried in the soil and there's been other non-mentionable material. We are ordering more special gloves for our, bar, our volunteers that will be working in our gardens and planters. Just to let you know, the cost of one pair of gloves is $60, and I think we're going to order about 10. Uh, we have two artists that have contacted us regarding the erection of a permanent flower structure. They didn't provide any more any further details. I think they just wanted to indicate there was an interest level there, and would we be okay with having them investigate it further? And, what was that uh, for, Carol? Sorry. It's called a, a permanent flower structure. And I'm thinking that it might be made of some type of metal product and oh. it would just be in a garden with a planted flower structure and painted. But okay. I don't know. But they didn't submit any drawings or anything. That's that's about all we got. So we've turned it back to them and we may or we may not hear anything further from them. And that concludes my report, Mayor Pazin. Great, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Councillor Doby? No. Uh, Councillor Doby, please extend my thanks to Dr. Sue Babinsy and her team. She did a wonderful job at the back entrance of the hospital around um, Halloween, and she yeah. did a really pretty pumpkin display. And then she did a really cute display for Easter too. And it's those gardens back there have been fairly neglected. And so they've done a really nice job with keeping oh. them up and maintaining them. Done a beautiful okay. job. That's really cleaned up that area, and I just can't think what the mural's going to do when that's finished. Nice. Thank you. I will pass that on. Yeah, thanks very much. Okay, Councillor Kishoni, you're next. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, the budget process has been completed, but we are still waiting for final calculations, and they actually came through today. But in order to understand what has happened with the regional district budgets, we need to go back to the 2019 budget year. In this budget year of 2019, the East End decided to begin, the use, to begin to use the revenue from the dams in Area A to offset, offset escalating costs in the services for the East End. The East End also decided to take a closer look at surplus monies that did not have a targeted purpose. In the 2019 budget year, the increase was 0% for the City of Trail, in fact, a bit less, and the East End transferred $500,000 per year every year to the fire service and this was a savings of $200,000. In the 2020 budget year, the East End also decided to transfer $200,000 from the Dan revenues to cover the cost of the new deputy fire chief position. We also decided to begin to use some of the reserve monies in the East End services alone so that we would not have to increase taxes to our constituents. In this budget year, 2020, total taxes for the City of Trail only went up decimal 88%. In both 2019 and 2020, all other participants in the East End of the services also saved a considerable amount of money based on the percentages paid by their municipality or electoral areas in the East End services. So the higher percentage you paid, the more money you saved. This is, brings us now to the 2021 budget year. This year, along with a $500,000 for the fire service and an accumulated draw from reserves of $100,000 from other East End services, we added a draw from the revenues from the dam of $150,000 per year every year until all of the transit projects are fully paid for. This represents a minimum of $700,000 over the next two and a half years, and it saves the City of Trail an additional $280,000. Along with this, we also took the $350,000 out of Administrative Reserve Account 001 to cover the $150,000 to the transit service for the East End and the $200,000 to the Beaver Valley Recreation Commission. This send saved $350,000 for the East End participants alone and $350,000 times 22.1% is 
is $77,350 saved for the city of Trail alone just by using these reserves. The budget for the 2016 fiscal year for the city of Trail will probably increase about 2.6 to 2.7 percent and virtually all of this increase is going to previously identified capital cost and the addition of two full-time positions along with administrative salary adjustments for the 2021 uh, year. When you consider the savings for the East End over the last two and a half years, they come up with $500,000 times four, which is two million, adding $100,000 out of reserve surpluses in the East End services and $700,000 for the transit, along with the $350,000 taken from the reserves and general administration, of which we pay 86.8%. And this will total $3,150,000. This is the amount saved by the total East End for the taxpayers of the East End. So um, th that's the total amount that $3 million, um, that $3 million, $300 million, $150,000 is what the whole East End saved in terms of money. For the city of Trail, not counting the 2021 budget, we had saved $920,000 by the decisions in 2019 and 2020. And now we had $280,000 for the transit savings along with $77,350 used by saved by using the reserves from the 001 administration to cover the $350,000 allocated in 2021 from the dam revenues. Therefore, in the last two and a half years, with the cooperation from the East End participants and the board of the regional district, the City of Trail has saved a total of $1 $277,350. Now this still leaves, and we've gone through this again, a reserve total of over $12 million across the region and over $7 million of reserves still held in the East End Services portfolio. We are waiting for the final calculations, but if they happen to be the 2.7% the that finance advises, we will, we will probably have the lowest increase among all the participants in the regional district. Therefore, the final calculation over the three years for the city of Trail will be zero plus 0.88 plus possible 2.7 is 3.58% divided by three years, which is a average annual increase of 1.19%. Hmm. The East End Services Committee will be reviewing the terms of reference for the committee so that we will be able to discuss and make recommendations to the board on work plans, budgets, and policies that impact us financially. Further, we will, looking, we will be looking at expanding the terms of reference to cover recommendations to the board on the revenues from the dam and their disposition. This seems reasonable, entirely reasonable, as all of the dam revenues come out of the East End and specifically from Area A. Later this week, I'll be doing a final review with the Finance Department uh, and looking at the final calculations on the increases to the requisitions for the City of Trail because at this point, there seems to be some discrepancy in the calculations and to be sure a meeting is scheduled to review them and finalize the number later in the week. And that wraps up all the basic budget for 2021. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions of Councillor Cashoni? Um, go ahead, Councillor Santori. Thank you, Mayor Pazin. Robert, I don't wanna turn something that was is relatively positive into something negative and it's, um, but, the wording that, yeah, uh, the, the city did save, you did save us money or the, the decisions made has saved us money in the short term, but I'm gonna raise that same caution to council that as long as we, I mean, as long as the East End 7 keep agreeing to draw money from the dam and from reserves to fund opera, uh, operating, uh, that's fine. But if the day ever comes where they don't, and we have to pick up that shortfall in taxation, then that could, and correct me if I'm wrong, Robert, that could cause a significant increase immediately if they choose not to continue to use our reserves, our regional district reserves and dam revenue to fund operating. Is that fair to say, Robert? Yes, that, that's fair to say, but I did mention last report that- Well, I know it's increasing. Dam, yeah, yeah, the dam revenues are increasing. And when we did the five-year projection, just to yeah. allay, uh, you know, all, allay any of your fears or concerns, when we did the five-year projection, we actually saw that even with the draws that are actually being done right now, the yeah. increase, the, the actual reserve is increasing. 
because what's really happening is that the, the revenues from the dam are accelerating at a much faster pace than we're drawing out. Yeah. Now, there is a problem, and I, I will agree with that, that 100%. Um, there's two ways, if I can take a moment, Lisa, to, to explain this, okay? There's two ways on the voting system, Sandy, and you must be aware of it because you were there. I don't yeah. know if they did it that much before. But you have a regular vote, which is out of the 13, uh, you have to have seven uh, out of 13 in order to carry. The weighted so, vote. So that's the unweighted, that's the unweighted vote. Yeah. Um, at the at at the and that's at the committee level. Then when it goes to the um, board level, you can ask for and you have to ask for a weighted vote. Now on the weighted vote, we have eleven out of eighteen votes on 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 the weighted vote because Trail has four, Rawson has two, and uh, that gives us a, a, a eleven out of eight, eleven yeah. out of eighteen. Yeah. So we could carry the vote, but. We never know what's going to happen in the future. There's no doubt no, about no, it. That, that's my point, Robert. That's I understand it. it. Yeah, that's it's a political. It can be a political decision down the road. Exactly. So the real problem is, is that if even one member in committee, if even one member in committee of the East End Seven were to not support, then it's down. Then, then it's dead. Yeah. So that's yeah. how tenuous. That's how tenuous that particular. Yeah, and that's all I is. wanted to bring to council's yeah. attention that exactly. as long as everybody's on board and everybody yeah. loves each other, we're great. Exactly. This is one, and then there's going to be a major impact in one year. That's right. It, it was would be much like when when we when we dissolved uh, recreation. recreation. Yeah. So that that is the problem, and one of the major issues you have, one of the major concerns I have is is keeping those particular people together in, in those particular votes. So right nope. now, all of the votes are there and those motions are carried. But you're right, yep. anytime one of them were to be, but I, you have to make sure you're clear on this and it have to be done in committee. Yep. The, 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 the decision would have to be done in committee. Yep. Let's imagine that, you know, Montrose, for example, decided not to support it, even though Montrose is, is one of the lowest paid in terms of paying into the East End service, that would kill the whole thing. Okay, I just wanted council to be aware. Thank Thank you. Yeah, it, would a, it would be a disaster. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Doby, you had your hand up and you're on mute again. So mute. Thank you. Um Councillor Santori pretty well asked what I was going to ask. My question was almost worded the same way. So thank you. Yep. Oh, you're okay. welcome. Very good. Um, Councillor Gatafoni Robinson, your reports, please. I don't have anything at this time, Your Worship. Okay, hey, thank you. Councillor Santori, your reports. Thank you, Mayor Pazin. Uh, there's no GOC report. Uh, I, uh, we have a meeting, I have a meeting scheduled with the RCMP on uh, Thursday morning. Uh, I, I think it's, it's one of the other officers in the absence of Mike Wasinowicz uh, has a call for the meeting to see where they can assist. We will go through that meeting and I'll participate in that meeting, but I'm thinking, or maybe I'm wrong, but given and what's transpired through the emails that I've read from council, uh, I'd be surprised if council doesn't want to meet directly with Mike Wasinowicz at some point. I think we have some frank questions that we want to ask uh, and some definitives that we need in terms of what the RCMP's duties are. Uh, what's expected of them or what we would expect of them. Uh, and just, I think we need to, there's a need to set the record straight out there in terms of what they will and will not do. Uh, I think council, I think that's where council is coming from based on the emails that I'm reading. So uh, I will report back um, from that meeting, but council may want to consider having a sit down with uh, Staff Sergeant Wasinowicz, uh, because uh, as I've said in the past and other councillors, I, I don't see situation improving in the short term, even though BC Housing was somewhat uh, uh, encouraged, encouraging today. Um, some of the problems that exist today will continue to exist even with the housing uh, projects that are planned in the next uh, 18 months to, to two years. So. I will report back on uh, the discussion that I have with the RCMP. Mike Wasinowicz uh, was ill and ended up in hospital for a short term. 
Um, so it's up to council, but I'm, I'm guessing that you will all want to meet with Mike at some point. So Councilor Santori, if I can just let you know that I had a conversation with uh, Sergeant Wisenowicz today and he has agreed that he would come to the next meeting. So that would be at the end of April to speak to oh. council. So oh. I forward that to staff and that will be coordinated should schedules allow for that. Okay. Uh, and on that note, uh, Mayor Pazin, and I don't know how we would do it, but I think we need to communicate, uh, we need to have a, at some point, a communication plan with the public, in terms of what can the what the RCP can and and cannot do. Uh, I mean, they, you know, like a, two weeks ago. I mean, I was frustrated as heck, just like all of you uh, after the incident outside Kootenay Savings Credit Union. And I know people are getting frustrated and. Uh, but there are limitations in terms of what the RCMP can do. And I, I don't know how we communicate this to the public. Uh, I'm sure there are some solutions out there, but uh, anyways, uh, I'll leave it at that. And I'll leave it to council to ask the questions of the RCMP when they meet with council. It, uh, I understand everybody's frustration, mine included. Okay, any questions with Councillor Santori? Go ahead, Councillor Butler. Councillor Santori, what incident outside of Courtney Savings are you referring to? I'd have to go back, kept my email. I think there was a self-sexual act taking place and somebody tried to start a fire in one of the garbage bins. Okay. Um, any other questions of Councillor Santori? Seeing none, Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mayor Pazin. I uh, just have a couple of things that I wanted to bring forward tonight. Um, you all got your email from Sandy Lucini today about the AKBLG um, AGM is being held on April 24th at 9.30 p.m. 10.30 Mountain Time, 9.30, sorry, Pacific, 10.30 Mountain Time via Zim, Zoom. <laughs> the annual convention is being held separately, and uh, I don't know if you uh, read the email, but hopefully um, they will have an in, we will have an in-person um, convention at Radium Hot Springs, October 1st to 3rd, and that decision to move forward on that will be made um, by June or by the end of June whether it'll be virtual or in person. And I wanted to talk about the um, incident at the Lynn Valley Library, uh, the stabbing incident. Uh, it really affected the staff at the Trail and District Public Library because they uh, deal with the same people that Lynn Valley deals with. It was quite emotional for them on different levels. Um, so they reached out to express their condolences and support to the Lynn Valley Library staff. And um, they are hoping to get some support to have a um, workshop with Ryan Dowd. And he is the executive director of um, He Said House. And, it's, um, and he goes around and does some training to organizations to uh, discuss how to work with these people compassionately and effectively and manage these kind of problems that happened at Lynn Valley. And I think it's a really good idea to get someone in like that to have a discussion with staff so that they can feel more confident, you know, doing the job that they're doing and to be able to um, problem solve on that kind of behavior when they have to. Uh, and they're also looking at the uh, building emer emergency plan next week uh, because of that situation. People in the Lynn Valley Library had difficulty, you know, getting away from this um, person who was stabbing them. They didn't know where the exits were and it was quite a horrible incident that happened down there. So I just wanted to let everybody know that, um, you know, it affected them, but they're going to try and, and uh, you know, just work together and be prepared if something like this were to ever happen in the library. And um, I guess that's it for uh, my report. 
Okay, thank you. Does thank anyone you. have any questions of Councillor Jones? Councillor Doby, go ahead and you're on mute. Councillor Jones, I just wanted to ask, do they have any distress call buttons in our library? I don't believe so. No, they talked about it when the building opened, but um, because they uh, do the, you know, walkabouts in the museum and stuff like that, they didn't really feel like it was necessary because they could just like, you know, holler over the balcony or whatever, but they don't have that, no. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Councillor Jones? Seeing none, thank you. Councillor Butler, do you have anything to report today? I don't have anything to report today, but I do think it's important that we all recognize rumor and myth versus fact and reality. Um, putting on my other hat as branch manager at Kootenai Savings Credit Union, I can confirm there was no fire uh, at the credit union. Um, sexual acts can be left up to people's interpretation of what they see. And I think it's becoming quite, uh, uh, it's ruining the morale of our city and our and where we live with rumors and facts and special interest groups that are out there. In yeah. talking with Staff Sergeant Wasinowich, um, I know that there are some groups that have been presenting to other councils in the region, which are making up quite uh, ludicrous falsehoods, which are getting out and becoming what people are considering to be fact. So I think it is quite important that we all take a moment to step back, especially on count, here on council, yeah. uh, and, and recognize what is really happening within our community and what people are in their heads making up is happening in our community. I'm not here to say that I disagree that there aren't issues. There are issues. We need to move in a positive direction on these issues and not uh, flounder with the rumors. So I'm sorry that it might have come across uh, a bit harsh to this evening, but I, I am just as co uh, uh, concerned and probably frustrated as many other councillors here at the table tonight. And I do definitely feel as frustrated as Councillor Centauri does on the issue. But I think uh, that being said, it, it, many of these things are becoming so uh, distorted that it's 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 not it's not productive to where we need to be going. So that is my report for the evening. Your Thank worship. you, Councillor Butler and Councillor Santori. Did you have something to say? Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, Paul. I take it uh, in the spirit that you intended. I I totally get it, and there are people that are embellishing, uh, and that's not hiding from the issues and some of the concerns that we have, and they are mm -hmm. serious. But I totally get it. I mean, I just I see it on Facebook. And, you know, they do embellish every situation. And now anything that looks out of the ordinary is blown totally out of proportion. That's not to say some real bad things aren't happening. They are happening. We get that. But uh, no, I take it in the spirit in which it was intended, Paul. I totally get it. I understand that. I mean, I, I am the one cleaning it up in the morning if it's there. <laughs> no, I, I can assure you what I've cleaned and what I haven't cleaned. Yeah. And, uh, ashes was yeah. not one of them. Something else was, but not, not uh, cinders from a fire. So. And it's unfortunate that some of these groups, although sometimes they're, they think that their intentions are good, are doing our community significantly more harm in terms of our image than they are doing good. And, you know, I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinions and they're entitled to uh, their uh, solutions or suggestions. But a lot of the comments and some of the stuff that they do and say is not, if they're really worried, concerned about our image and our city, mm -hmm. they'd be holding off on some of the initiatives that they've undertaken to undermine the work of, of the RCMP and some of the other agencies in our community. So, I mean, we all have to do better uh, and we're trying, so. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Okay. Um, any other questions for Councillor Butler? Okay. And my report. So I have two reports from Hospital District uh, Hospital District Activity. So there was a meeting a few weeks ago to determine the budget for this fiscal year and tax apportionment for 2021. This meeting, we approved all the bylaws for the major equipment and projects and equipment between 5,000 to 100,000, which is a global grant. 
So the budget was approved at a 5.5% tax reduction with a balance of 282,628 going to reserves. Also was approved borrowing of $15,161,562 for the KBRH phase two pharmacy and ambulatory care expansion. And the total tax requisition was $4.83 million with a total annual budget passed of $23,237.59. So following the budget approvals, we had a discussion on priority topics to advance at the UBCM. And it was a round table where people were able to express what they uh, thought they wanted. We wanted to really lobby and discuss with um, the ministers. And this is going to be further refined and brought back for discussion at a future meeting. I also attended an Interior Health West Cooney Boundary Regional Hospital District meeting. And this focused on a discussion of COVID strategy. So it was a recap of the past work and the current age-based strategy. They encouraged everyone, well, I encourage everyone to tune in for details on your local news station. Uh, visit the BCCDC website. That is the most valuable point of information for statistics if you are interested in that. And tune in to Dr. Bonnie Henry and Minister Adrian Dix's teleconferences biweekly. There is now a change to the provincial booking system for vaccinations. So if you go online, you can register regardless of your age and it will prompt you to book when it's your turn, when your age cohort comes up. And the prompt is either by email or a text message. So you can go on to this website, www.getvaccinated.gov.bc.ca and register yourself. It does not take very long, just a little bit of your personal information, your birth date, your, your address, your uh, where you live, and also your per personal healthcare number. And then when it is your time to register, you will get that prompt. Um, lastly, I wanted to congratulate city, the city and its staff for receipt of the Canadian Award for Financial Reporting for the 2019 annual report. This is the city's fourth consecutive year to receive the CANFOR for its excellence in financial reporting. The annual report includes a comprehensive collection of the city's audited financial statements while given the opportunity to tell Trail's annual story in a creative and engaging manner. Once again, I just wish to congratulate all of the city and the staff involved directly in the report compilation um, and for this outstanding achievement. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Doby, go ahead. Um, Mayor Payson, when we had an earlier discussion, I, was, I withdraw my question. Okay. All right. We can take it offline if you'd like to do that. Um, anyone else have any questions? All right, thank you. So item number six is the consent agenda. 6.1 is the report on invoices paid for municipal services, March 1st to 31st, 2021. The report is before you. I believe the motion would be to receive the report, the consent agenda report. Um, do I have someone to make that motion? Councillor Butler and second, Councillor Jones. Uh, Ms. McIsaac, did I do that right? It's received, right? Because it's not prompted. It is, yes. Yeah. Sorry okay. that we failed to include that, but it would be that the item on the consent agenda be received for information. Okay, thanks very much. So I've got a first and a second. Um, any questions on this item? Councillor Doby. I think I'm off mute. Yeah, you are. <laughs> On March the 12th, I just had one question. Um, $997.50 was paid out to David Perhudoff. Do we have any more details on that payout? I don't from this, but staff can take that away and get that back to you. Thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions on that? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. If any? Carried. Uh, any new business? 
Seeing none from the floor. Okay, we'll move on to department reports. 8.1 is a bylaw enforcement department report of March 2021. The recommendation is that this report be received for information. So moved, Robert. Okay, moved by Councillor Cushoni, second by Councillor Santori. Thank you. Any questions on this report? Councillor Jones, did you have a question and you're on mute? I uh, do have a, just a question. Now, um, I know at our meeting last Wednesday, you mentioned that the um, bylaw officer was doing more um, foot patrols in the alleyway. Mm -hmm. Is that documented on this form anywhere? Is there any kind of documentation? Do you want to speak to that because you manage the bylaw? I will. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Councillor uh, Jones, you may notice on the bylaw enforcement issues report um, in the second section where we indicate the types of violations and the number of violations that's intended to give a, a broad summary of um, the types of issues our bylaw enforcement team are working with. Um, as a result of our increased um, activity and involvement in the uh, homeless situation, we have included uh, that as a category. So um, the last item there uh, noted homeless encampments. Um, there were 21 attendances um, most recently in this month. So uh, our bylaw enforcement staff are, uh, are acting uh, proactively with both the RCMP and career development service staff. Uh, paying attention to activities in the alleyways, uh, in municipal parks and other city lands. So you will see that on an ongoing basis added on the monthly summary report. Okay, thank you. I actually I actually did see that. I just wanted, I wanted to make sure that that's what that was for. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on this report? None. Um, all in favor for receipt? Aye. Against, if any? Carried. Thank you. Um, the next item is a late item that was advanced. Just flip my page. And this is our tax rate bylaw number 2903-2021, first, second, and third readings, and then a second recommendation for adoption. So Ms. McIsaac, I'm going to pass it over to you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the tax rate bylaw is a companion bylaw to the financial plan bylaw that you did give three readings and adoption to earlier in the meeting. At the time of the agenda preparation, we were still waiting to hear from the Regional District of Kootenay Boundary with respect to uh, the requisition for this year. And it was received very late Friday night. Uh, and so our Chief Administrative Officer, uh, first thing this morning, did the uh, calculation of tax rates in order that we could put the tax rate bylaw before you tonight for three readings. And it does set out the, uh, the tax rates for the respective classes um, in alignment with the financial plan. And so it is being recommended that you give first, second and third readings. And then separately, because we are operating under the authority of the emergency program order, that you also uh, adopt the bylaw at tonight's meeting. Okay, so the first recommendation is that the tax rate bylaw number 2903 2021 receive its first, second, and third readings. Do I have someone to make that motion? Councillor Kashoni. Do I have someone to second that motion? Councillor Santori. Are there any questions on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Against, if any? Carried. The second recommendation is that tax rate bylaw number 2903-2021 be adopted as permitted under the authority of the emergency program order M192. Do I have a someone to make that motion? So move. Councillor Gattafoni Robinson, thank you. Do I have someone to second that motion? Councillor Doby, thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, if any? Carried. And I need a motion for adjournment. Um, oh, excuse me, Mayor Payson, before yeah. we adjourn, is there any way we can go off camera to discuss my question? Um, or go off video, whatever it is? Yeah, so we need to adjourn the meeting. Ms. McIsaac, can I just, um, 
How would you like to handle this? It, you'll be able to continue discussions once we uh, end the meeting. Uh, we'll just um, end the meeting for all and all of you just stand by. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so um, I need a motion for adjournment. Mm -hmm. Councilor Jones, thank you.